Welcome to this Wiseout tutorial on Power Apps. In this part of the series, we'll be looking at the gallery control. As part of this, we will look at how to add a gallery, working with the different sections available, adding new controls into the gallery, displaying, which is the current row, changing row settings, and how to externally reference the gallery. Let's begin. On the Apps tab, go up to the top left, New App, Start with Page Design, Blank Canvas. Let's pull in some data. On the far left, go down to Data, Add Data, OneDrive, OneDrive for Business, choose your email address, move to 8281 separate, Tick the Actors table and choose Connect. To insert a gallery, go up to Insert, down to Layout, and we've got a couple of options. The main difference between the vertical and horizontal galleries is which direction you want to scroll. Left to right for the horizontal or up and down for the vertical. I'm going to go with the vertical gallery. Choose your data source, Actors. To move the gallery, you'll need to make sure you're clicked in the bottom section, and then you should get a little cursor. Drag the gallery up. I'm just gonna resize it a little bit. First thing we need to do is add controls into the gallery. There are two sections in your gallery. The main body, where we can format the background, and general options, and then this top section. The easiest way to get to the top section is clicking above add an item from the insert panel. So I'm gonna do that. I can then resize this, and this top section will determine how big each individual row is. Whilst clicked inside of this top section, go to insert, and one way of creating a background is to add a rectangle. I'm gonna stretch this up and you'll notice any changes I make are reflected on all the other rows. I recommend that you always leave yourself a little bit of space at the end of the row to make it easier to select. I'm gonna shrink my row down a little bit. Nice. To show my data, let's insert a text label. And again, since I was clicked in this top section, it's automatically added this to every row. Drag this over to the right. And then come to the top of the page. This item dot actor ID. Let's delete the actor ID. Delete the dot. Put the dot back in. So this item refers to the current row. So we have one row in our gallery for each row in our data source. This item refers to the row or record. And of course, a record is a row made up of multiple columns. So we can choose which column we want to display. I'm going to go with the full name. Tap that in. If you want to format this control, it's just the same as it is outside of a gallery. Go to the right hand side. Come down to your color settings. I'm going to change the background color. And I'm going to choose a light gray. If your names aren't fitting, like Richard Attenborough, you can stretch the control until the information fits. If you want a second control, you can click on the cell, Control C, Control V to duplicate the row. Position it, go to the top of the page, delete the dot full name, and then choose your second piece of information. So I'd like to bring in the gender. 
as long as I've clicked on a control inside of this top section, I can add into the top section. But you may find it easier when you have multiple controls to click on the edge of the row. And that'll select the top row. Insert. This time, let's go for an image. Choose your image control. Position that on the page. And then up the top where it says sample image, we're going to replace that with this item dot. And we want to pull in the image URL. If I want to scroll down inside of the gallery, I could hold the Alt key and scroll down to find my rows that have successfully brought through an image. Just like in a data table, one of our rows is the selected row. There is no way of changing the row color, but what we can do is change the color of our rectangle. Select your rectangle control. Up the top left, change it from on select to fill. And then delete the RGBA inside of it. If you want to test a condition, there is the if function. And the if function works the same as it does in Excel. Put in a condition. If it returns true, then do one thing. If it returns false, do another. I can type in this item dot, and you'll see we've got an option for is selected. So this is a Boolean, it's going to return true if this is the current row. And if it's not the current row, it will return false. Comma, if this returns true, then I want to return color and I'm going to have color dot blue violet comma otherwise I want to return color dot blanched almond close your bracket if I want to change the row I can hold alt click on another row and you'll see it swaps which one is the selected row. By default, the gallery is on a scroll bar. You can test this holding the Alt key, or in the top right-hand corner, if you run the app and scroll inside of it, we can move up and down the rows. If you exit back out, and this time, I don't want to select the top section. I want to select the entire gallery. If you're ever having trouble selecting the gallery, maybe your controls are a little too close, you can move over to tree view on the left hand side and click on the gallery there. There is no tree view equivalent to selecting the first row, so that you'll just need to practice with. Select the entire gallery for me, come over to the right hand side and let's look at the available properties. We have the data source, our fields from the data source, the default layout, we chose blank, but there are pre-made templates. We've got whether it's visible and its position, the color of the background, so that would be this white section here, and the border color, which I've currently got selected. But beneath this, we also have our row settings. So the first option we have is to show or not show the scroll bar. So if I want to, I can turn that off to hide the scroll bar. Then beneath that, we have the option for navigation. Turn that on. And at the bottom of the gallery, you'll see that there's an arrow. Hold the Alt key, click, and you'll move down one row. This is being controlled by the next option down, navigation step. So it's going to step by one each time. If I want to create the illusion of pagination, separate pages within the gallery, I can change this number 
to match however many I have on screen currently. I have five, so I'm going to set my navigation step to five. This will create the illusion that I've got separate pages by stepping down five each time. So Richard Attenborough is my bottom row. When I click on next, it skips down to the row below that, Samuel Jackson. Beneath that, we also have some options regarding how the gallery reacts to your row. Currently, when my mouse moves over the top of my rows, nothing happens. If I change the transition to pop, when I move over the top of my rows and hold the Alt key, you'll see the row pops, it gets slightly larger. Or if you change it to push, the row goes backwards and gets slightly smaller. Remember, you can click to choose which one the selected row is. I want to externally reference this row. The way I can do this is by referencing the gallery and then referring to its selected property. I'm going to click off the gallery and insert a text label. I'm going to position that just to the right of my existing gallery and change the text. Current row, colon, and a space. And then to concatenate, to join two bits of text together, Shift 7. After this, we can either put in more text or we can put in an expression. Gallery 1 dot selected. So that's the current row. A record is a row with multiple columns. Dot. And then choose what you want to display. So I want to show the full name. I'll stretch that a little larger. And now when I hold the Alt key and click on a different row, I can see it updating in real time. Let's give this file a save. Up the top left, use the drop down, save as, 04, galleries. Give that a save. Use the drop down, download a copy. Download. Thanks for watching this Wise Out tutorial. In the next one, we'll have a look at learning basic formula. See you in the next one.